It is day number 13 in the month of August 2023. Good evening and welcome to Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. Ion Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, Meridian Port Services, and indeed Phoenix Insurance. The show is proudly powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA. And our media partner on this journey of a lifetime is the Business and Financial Times, the BNFT. Now, if you want to have a grasp of all that transpired on the show tonight, make a date and grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT, and you'll be able to see all that happened here on the show tonight. We are streaming live on our social media pages. On Facebook, we are live at Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, we are live at Port of Tema. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at Ion Port Ghana. Ion Port Ghana. Indeed, we shall be getting interactive with you, and so all you have to do is send us your messages and comments ahead via our dedicated WhatsApp line, which is 055-019-177. 055-019-177. And at the appropriate time, when I pick signals from the production team that the time is right, we shall be activating the phone lines for you to call in and contribute to the discussion. My name is Kennedy Mona. We are going for a quick break. When we return, we will continue with the show. Please stay with us. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay. Are they come? Shut <laughs> Boss. Fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill your up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP high performance products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey, go for a boy, don't go, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Goyle, Goyle is good energy. Electricity, electricity, pay your taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your known tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. 
sometimes serene, sometimes calm, sometimes turbulent, and at times it brings the unexpected. However, it is like trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302 246 319 or 0243 690 492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the weekend. In the course of the week, the Ghana Revenue Authority had calls to assemble some senior media practitioners and editors uh, to educate them on some new tax uh, policies that they are rolling out in connection with gaming and lottery operations in our country. And during that particular session, some other very important announcements were made. We bring you some stories from that encounter. To widen the domestic tax net, some amendments have been made to the Income Tax Act 2023, Act 1094, with implications for the gaming industry. From the 15th of August, a 10% withholding tax will be exacted from gross winnings from all betting, gaming, loto, and other games of chance. This means bettors will now pay a withholding tax of 10% of the profits accrued on wins, and this replaces the existing 15% VAT that is charged. So if you played with 100 Ghana and you won, then you are, you are giving 200 as your win. The tax will not be on 200, it will only be on the profit. So because the tax is on the return on the... In addition to this, operators of gaming enterprises will pay a 20% tax on gross gaming revenue to replace corporate income tax. Ahead of implementation, the Ghana Revenue Authority has engaged news editors to help them understand the rationale behind the policy. According to the Commissioner for the Domestic Tax Revenue Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Edward Jambra, a sum of 1.2 billion Ghana cities is expected to be collected during the initial stages of implementation. He warned that gaming enterprises that do not comply with the new rules will be subject to penalties, including having their licenses revoked. And let me say that as you have been appointed as our holding agent, the obligation is on you to withhold. And if you fail to do that, with the interaction that we've had with you and the support of the Gaming Commission, you can be assured that your license will be withdrawn. An additional revenue of 455 million Ghana cities is expected to be made from excise duties following an amendment to the fair schedule of the Excise Duty Act 2014, Act 878. This is because there has been an introduction of the hybrid method of duty calculation on tobacco and other related products viewed as generally unhealthy. If you talk to the health authorities, they will tell you their pain. If you talk to other researchers, they are also complaining that something must be done. Something must be done. And this area has been left out for long, and the time is appropriate, even at the OCWAS level. The health taxes must be given immediate attention. Basically, what this means is that e-cigarettes, sugar-sweetened beverages, carbonated soft drinks, spirits and wines will cost more when imported. This revelation was made during the same engagement with the news editors. Nelson Bright Chu is the head of compliance at the excise unit of the Ghana Revenue Authority. He said the development is in line with ECOWAS recommendations for the treatment of such products. The ECOWAS directive on the harmonization of excise duty on tobacco products directs that excise duty on tobacco products must include ad valorem and specific duty the ad valorem rate is required to be 50% or more on the value, while the specific tax rate is required to be a minimum equivalent of two cents per stick in the case of cigarette, cigar, cigarello, and the CD equivalent of $20 per net kilo for all other tobacco products. 
and that related development to bring about sanity and fairness in the local textile industry. An excise tax stamp on textiles has been introduced by the Ghana Revenue Authority. The excise tax stamp, specially designed with digital and other security features, will be affixed on textile products to indicate taxes and duties have been paid or will be paid. The textile tax stamp will control the importation and local manufacture of textile for revenue purposes, check tax evasion through smuggling, as well as illicit trading and counterfeit. You know, imported products also pay, they are supposed to pay import duty, import VAT, import national health insurance levy and those kind of things. Currently, those that are smuggled, they don't pay. While the local industries are paying what they are expected to pay, that's making their products more expensive. So by introducing this policy as Nelson explained, to make sure that everybody is paying what they are, everyone is paying what is he or she is expected to pay, and to level the playing field for everybody. According to the GRA, sanctions will be imposed on non-compliant traders. All right, so those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week in our country. We're now going international to see what's happening on the global stage. The world's largest LNG bunkering ship, Haiyang Shuyu 301, also known as Offshore Oil 301, has completed its first ship-to-ship -ship bunkering operation involving a very large crude carrier at the anchorage of Guangzhou port. The 8.5 operation saw Offshore Oil 301 provide the 320,000 ton dual fuel tanker Maran Dion with approximately 6,500 cubic meters of liquefied natural gas. The operation was the inaugural ship-to-ship -ship LNG bunkering carried out by Pavilion Energy and CNOOC Gas and Power Group. With efforts continuing to build out the infrastructure for different forms of LNG bunkering, renewable energy company Axpo announced plans to launch a first-of-its-kind ship-to-truck bunkering capability based in Italy, as well as ship-to-ship -ship LNG bunkering. The company will build a new bunker vessel due to enter service in 2025 based in the Gulf of Naples and the adjoining Tyrrhenian Sea region. Axpo based in Switzerland has entered into a long-term agreement with Italy's Gas and Heat and the San Giorgio del Porto shipyard for the new small-scale LNG vessel and bunkering capability. The flagship project was set up in collaboration with the Italian government's Infrastructure and Transport Ministry, MIT, and the Central Tyrrhenian Sea and Naples Port Authorities. Hey, welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at the word of the day. And remember, the word or phrase of the day has been fashioned to bring you up to speed with the terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. Today's word is port of registry. Port of registry. Port of registry refers to a place where a ship is registered with the authorities, thereby establishing its nationality. All right, welcome back. We are now zooming into our discussion proper tonight. And tonight we are taking a look at the agricultural input supply sector and uh, some of the challenges they face when they are importing into our country and what the way forward would be for this particular space. Now, players and practitioners in this particular space have grappled with a lot of issues in the past, and they are still grappling with these same issues and have made efforts to get these issues addressed, but to no avail. And so tonight we want to examine what the challenges are when they are importing these uh, agro-inputs into the country. Uh, we say we are an agri-based country, uh, I mean, we depend heavily on agriculture in this country. And so it makes sense that we can have players in this particular space who bring in inputs to supply to our farmers. And I mean, they should do so uh, conveniently so that our farmers can have the inputs that they require uh, to do farming uh, the way they should do it, commercially, so to speak. And so we want to examine what the challenges are when they are importing these agricultural inputs and uh, what we can do to support them, to help them 
to operate effectively and efficiently and for some sanity to prevail in, in this particular space. And so it gives me pleasure tonight to introduce to you uh, Mr. Uh, Rashad Kadri. Uh, Kadri Rashad, he is the Programs Manager for Crop Life Ghana. Not his first time on the show, he's been here before. Good evening, Rashad, and welcome. Thank you very much, Mona. Absolutely. Uh, Good to pleasure. have you back. Sure, sure. The pleasure Great. is all mine. Absolutely. And also in the studios with us is Mr. David Owari Anson, who is Managing Director of Agro Sciences, uh, Rainbow. Rainbow Agro Sciences Limited. Yes. Absolutely. Good evening, sir, and welcome. Good evening. We are glad to have you. Thank you very much. Yes, so let me start with you, Rashad. If you can uh, refresh our minds uh, once again uh, about what Crop Life is about and what you're doing. Thank you very much, Mona. Mm. Um, basically, Crop Life is an organization that is affiliated to um, Crop Life Africa, Middle East, and then Crop Life International. Mm. And it is membership driven. Mm. Um, when I say membership driven, um, we have membership uh, who register to become Crop Life Ghana members. Right. And our members are into the importation and distribution of crop protection products such as pesticides and fertilizers mm. and other agriculture inputs in Ghana. Mm. And um, basically, as of now, we have about 23 member companies and still counting who bring in these... 23 member companies, yes, okay. who bring in um, crop protection products and other agri inputs uh, for the benefit of uh, the teaming farmers in, in Ghana. Mm. And Rainbow Agri Science is also a member of Crop Life Ghana, I must say. Okay. When you say crop protection products, what does that mean? Yeah, so crop protection basically is um, pesticides, fertilizers mm. that we, we, we use on our farms mm. to reduce uh, pest infestations mm. and also disease control. Mm. So mm. Th these are pest, uh, crop protection products. Mm. And you say you have 23 member companies? Yes. All in Ghana? All in Ghana. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you can brief us on, uh, you, you, you made mention of the fact that you are in East Africa, West Africa? Yes. So yes. basically Crop Life... Um, Which countries? You can mention the So we are affiliated to Crop Life Africa Middle East. Mm. And um, with, so with the Africa Middle East, we have the West African region mm. where we have Crop Life Ghana, Crop Life Cote d'Ivoire, Crop Life Cameroon. Right. Then in the Eastern Africa, we have Crop Life Kenya and then do about six or seven other crop life countries um, yes. in the Eastern Africa, then in the Middle East mm. as well. Then we have the mother body, which is Crop, crop life, life International. International yes. You all report to International. Yes, which is um, headquartered in Belgium. Belgium, okay. Yes. Wow, absolutely, great. Uh, let me come to Mr. Ansong. Uh, can you tell us about Rainbow uh, Agro Sciences Limited? Yes, Rainbow Agro Sciences. You made mention the fact that you are a member of Yes, crop we are life. a member yes. of uh, crop, uh, crop Life. Mm. And we uh, major in the importation of crop protection products, that's mm. the pesticides, as he mentioned. Oh, yeah. And um, we've been in Ghana for the past 10 years. Right. And um, in Rainbow, we say it's all about growing, growing mm. um, with the farmers, providing them the best solutions mm. so that they will be able to grow their crops well. Mm. And also the yeah. input dealers that we work with, we make sure that um, their business um, also grows. So Rainbow is contributing to um, food security in this country mm. by bringing in the best um, agrochemical products that the farmers use. Mm. Now you are those that import the goods into the country. Tell us, what are some of the issues that you are having? Well, the issues are um, quite a lot. You mm. know, um, let me give a bit of background. Um, for the population of Ghana is increasing, mm. and we cannot feed the population with a subsistence farming. Mm. Definitely, we have to do bigger farms. Absolutely. And when you do that, you need um, agri inputs, mm. both the crop protection and machinery. Yes. So we come in to import this um, item. Most of the agri inputs are all imported. Mm. And it, once you do import, there are a lot of... Um, problems that we face. Number yeah. one being the exchange rate issues, right. which you know, currency, uh, fluctuations. currency mm -hmm. from last year, it was worse mm. and it's impacted so much. A lot of our uh, members made uh, um, exchange rate losses mm. and also issues of um, interest rates. You know, if you want to go Borrow. to the bank mm. to get a loan to do a business in Ghana, you know where the rates are. Mm. Right now, I think it's about 30 to 40 percent. I don't know. This is mm. um, extremely high. Mm. And most of the banks see Agric as a high risk area. So when you go, it's difficult for them to lend 
um, to you once you are going into agriculture because mm. they see that it's quite um, uh, risky. Mm. And also cost of doing business uh, in Ghana is also um, an issue for us. Mm. You know where inflation is as at now, mm. over 50%, I guess. So, you know, these uh, mac macroeconomic issues are seriously impacting on our business. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. So um, you made mention of currency fluctuations, interest rates, uh, which is between 30 and 40%. Uh, cost of doing business also very hard. Those are the three, three catalog points that uh, you have mentioned. Um, we have a bank like the Agricultural Development Bank that is yeah. specifically, uh, that's even as the name, you know. Agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so how come that we have a bank dedicated to the agri sector and you have issues, you know, with all these? Well, I believe, I, I can't speak for ADB, but I believe mm. that they will say um, they are doing their best. Mm. But what we can do is to check their portfolio, how much of the uh, loans that they have given out mm. goes into uh, agri. agri. And I'm sure that when we check, probably they are giving more to other businesses than agri. Because, mm. you know, they are there to make money. And mm. I believe that they see, just like the other commercial banks, mm. will see agri as a risky area. Mm. And, you know, to pr protect their business, they may not be uh, giving out a uh, lot of loans mm. to farmers mm. or to people who are in the agri space. Mm. All right, I'll come back to you so that we'll, z we'll go into specifics uh, in terms of your imports, what, what sure. some of the things are, some of the challenges are that you grapple with. But last time you were here, uh, Rashad, uh, we took a look at some of the challenges you had and you gave us a scenario where you had written to the Minister of Finance and there was this back and forth and things. Sure. Can you bring us up to speed with okay. what has, has come out of it? So Thank far? you very much, Mona. Um, as Mr. David said, um, already the cost of bringing out these inputs mm. from the ports are already very high. Mm. And um, last year, somewhere September 12th, um, government of Ghana passed the Tax Exemptions Act 2022, Act 1083. And um, this act did not, it, it excluded agri inputs. Mm. Uh, what it meant was that if, if you were bringing in any agri inputs into the country, that the Tax Exemptions Act didn't take care of it. So you would have to apply right. to uh, the Ministry of Finance uh, to grant you the tax exemptions. Mm. Um, that, that was a challenge then. And uh, our companies since then applied through the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to the Ministry of Finance to grant these tax exemptions for them to be able to clear off these goods from the ports. And I can tell you that from January till now, no, none of our member companies have been able to get any of these tax exemptions. Mm. And it has ballooned the cost of pro, uh, the inputs mm. uh, that they have brought in because uh, Mr. David was saying he has some figures that he would have to uh, yes. share with you. Mm. Uh, we, we engaged the, the Ministry of Agriculture in that respect mm. uh, because that same tax exemption gives the Ministry of Agri the, uh, the chance to grant industry-specific taxes, right. exemptions. For instance, uh, the Ministry of Agri can grant tax exemptions to the Ministry of... Uh, the Ministry of Finance can grant tax exemptions to the Ministry of Agri yes. if they put into writing. Mm. So we push through the Ministry of Agri to um, write to the Ministry of Finance to grant those tax exemptions and till date, uh, none of our companies have this? been able. Um, since the beginning of January, because the letter was written to the Ministry of Agri mm. uh, around 10th January, mm. if I recall. Ministry and, of Finance. Yeah, Ministry of Finance, Finance yes. Yeah. Around 10th January, 2023. Mm. And as it st stands now, the tax exemptions haven't been granted. Have you made some follow-ups? Yes, we've made follow-ups with the Ministry of Agri, and then we've written petitions to the Ministry of Finance as well. But then the, ch the major challenge too was that whilst we were waiting for these tax exemptions to be granted, mm. the goods were locked up at the ports and they were attracting extra costs in, in, uh, in the form of demorages. Right. Yes, so at uh, the point where we realized that um, we were not getting the tax exemptions anytime <coughs> soon, uh, most of our member companies went ahead to clear their goods, and uh, it has ballooned the prices of these inputs. Mm. And uh, it's going to have a dire impact on our food security as we speak right now. Mm. Mm. All right, so what's the current state, and uh, where have you reached in, in terms of your quest to get the ministries of finance and agree to uh, you know, yield to this sure. particular? Because if from January through to date, 
you haven't been able to secure even one tax yeah. exemption for one company yeah. under your belt, then it, it gives cause for worry. Definitely. Um, and w when we started engaging the Ministry of Agric, that was the time there was a gap uh, between uh, Dr. Akotu's resignation mm. and mm. then um, Dr. Brian Champons yes. coming into. So there yes. was a gap. Right. And then we had to wait for a substantive minister to be nominated and approved. Right. Then we can uh, see through the tax exemptions mm. together with that uh, uh, Dr. A champion. Mm. So we, we met with the, uh, the Minister of Agric, uh, with his deputies, and then even with um, the Chairman for the Parliamentary Select Committee on mm. Food and Agriculture in Parliament. And then um, we were given assurance during our meetings that these tax exemptions will be granted, and mm. that when the Exemptions Act were pa was passed, mm. um, it was purely an oversight, right. which... which <laughs> uh, so your, your, your prayer was that it would be captured? Yes. In, so that it, it will be passed as well. Yes. But it, so it, it, it didn't wasn't happen. captured. Yes. But the same act gives the prerogative to the Minister of Finance mm. to grant industry specific exemptions to certain ministries, sector mm. ministries, like the Minister of Food and Agriculture. Right. So if the Minister of Agriculture puts into writing, demanding or requesting for tax exemptions for some category of agri inputs, the Minister of Finance would go ahead to grant those exemptions. Right. So this letter was written by the Minister of Food and Agriculture to the Minister of Finance requesting for these tax exemptions to be granted for agri-inputs. And um, that is what we've still, we are still chasing till date. Mm. All right, so Mr. Anson gave me some uh, documents here. These are bill, bill of entries, yes. uh, two of them, and they were for the same consignments yeah. last year and this year. Yeah. And yeah. if you take a look at the total amount paid for last year, it, it sums up to 35,508.36 Ghana cities. Yes. And uh, that for 2023, okay, this, this, year, this one was... Uh, uh, 27th June 2022. Yeah. And then this one, the date is uh, 17th May yeah. 2023. Mm -hmm. And the amount is 104,108.56 cities. Yeah. Sure. So it shot up from 35,000 in 2022 to 104,000 in 2023. Yeah. Tell us what, 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 what you think the issue is. So um, what I gave you, yes. the 2022 one mm. is just for 1,700 cuttings and we're paying uh, the 35 mm. and the 20 um, cuttings of what of uh, product we call glyphosate yes yeah. and okay. uh, 2023 mm. you know you you can check the uh, quantity there yes the quantity in 2023 is even lesser than the 2022 mm -hmm. but we are paying times three you know duty yes you know and it's because and if you check i have um, underline certain things. Yes. Because of the removal of the um, exemption mm. for import duty, yes. that one we are paying. Mm. And then special import levy was also uh, an exempted item mm. last year. We are also paying. Mm. Processing fee. It means we are paying it now. Yeah. We are paying it now. Uh. And then IRS deposit. So in total, this sums up to about 10%. Mm. Of so you have the special special import levy which you were pay, you were not paying, we're not paying but because they've scrapped the, the, the exemptions, exemptions you, you now pay that. Now paying that and you also have an IRS deposit what is yeah. that you know that's um, uh, GRA when you are uh, clearing from the port yes. you would pay a one percent on the CIF yes cost as, insurance and freight value yes as yes. deposit mm. uh, for your income uh, tax yes yes. But last year, because of the exemption um, regime, mm. we were not paying that amount. Right. But after the removal, the, all the four items that I've just listed, we are paying um, now. Mm. And then one other issue which is significant, I mentioned the exchange rate. You yes. see that last year, the exchange rate was around 7. Yeah. And yeah. if you check on the declaration yes. there, it's now about... Almost 11, 11 10 yeah. point uh, something. Yes. So all these things coming together, you know, is now making... 10.9, yeah. Yes, as pay yeah. times three mm. of what we were paying last year. Mm. So it means that if... Our, last year was 7.2. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our, if, assuming for the purpose of this discussion, mm. if your budget for clearing last year was like 1 million CDs, yes. then it means that you have to have... Three million, million yeah. to be able to uh, do the same volume of business in 2023, mm. Mm. and this is uh, extremely high. Mm. You know, if you you don't have that kind of money, then 
it means that you have to go to the bank mm. to borrow. Yes. And we've already discussed issues about um, <laughs> the interest rates with, at the yeah. bank. Mm. There is no way you'll be able to make any profit mm. uh, in this kind of condition. Mm. And it's also important because it's affecting the cost of input. Mm. So farmers are now buying their inputs at a very high price. Yes. And then cost of production for the farmers have also gone up. Mm. And because of that, some of them will cut down on their, the size yes. of their land because if they don't have the money to do, say, a 10 acre, mm. they would have to reduce it to um, five acres, mm. right? And apart from that, you know, they are also business people. Yes. Once cost of production for them has gone up, they would have to transfer, pass it, to the, transfer yeah. it to the consumer. Yes. And recently, um, statistical service brought out the uh, inflation for July. Yeah. And we saw where food inflation is, mm. over 50%. Mm. So these things, uh, government should be uh, minded mm. that it is causing food prices to go up. Mm. We are business people. Once our costs have gone up so much, mm. we will transfer it to the farmer. Mm. And then the farmer will now transfer it to the consumer. Mm. And, you know, with the economic situation we are facing, if yes. food prices are also extremely high, mm. it brings too much um, hardship to the people. Right. So it's very important that government really look this um, exemption uh, issue mm. and try as much as possible to help the industry so that at least farmers will have their inputs at reasonable prices. Mm. Yeah. Rashad, how would you describe the agro uh, inputs uh, supply uh, space? Um, how have we fared as a country in times past? And if you compare that to now, what would, would be your assessment? Okay, thank you. Um uh, if if you have if you do make do a thorough assessment of the agro input space, mm. um, it is a blend of multinationals and then local industries mm. together. Mm. But uh, the multinationals um, have a bigger mat market share mm. compared to the local um, investors. Mm. And um, as Mr. David was saying, before you can bring in um, these inputs, you need some amount of financial wet weather. Yes. Before you can bring them in and. If in the past the, the grounds has been leveled up for both the multinationals and then the locals, mm. and we've had a lot of a number of locals into uh, venturing into the importation and distribution of um, agri inputs. Yeah. And the thing is, when, when they bring in these inputs and then they make sales, a, a chunk of the monies are retained in the country, which is invested in other mm. uh, portfolios. They have a lot of employment, and it has it has help the youth in gaining employment in, in one way or the other. Mm. But this situation as we speak now um, is going to distort the ground mm. because you would need extra money, like Mr. David said, he, he to you if you used one million to uh, bring in one container. Now you need three times the same amount to bring yeah. in the same container. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going to be a bantam uh, of uh, who has the financial muscle. Yeah. And you know most definitely this most, most nationals are going to outweigh mm. um, the local um, investors yeah. and it's going to distort the, the, the market as well. Mm. And just to add to what Mr. David was saying, um, last week the World Bank released a report that indicated that Ghana was ranked among the 10 West countries with higher food inflation. Mm. And this, is, this can be attributed to the high cost of inputs because once the cost of inputs are high, it's definitely going to translate into the, the food prices. Mm. And uh, we consumers, ordinary consumers, you and I, are going to feel it as well. Mm. Another angle that we should look at this issue of the tax exemptions is our, our industry, like any other industry, has its own challenges. Mm. And one of the major challenges has been the issue of counterfeits and illegal um, crop protection products and uh, like pesticides and fertilizers. If, if these exemptions are not granted and input prices keep soaring, farmers would have no choice but to look for cheaper sources of inputs, mm -hmm. which might just be counterfeit or illegal pesticides and fertilizers mm. or other agri inputs in the market. And this is not going to uh, go well for this food security that we are all been, been, been working towards. Mm. Mm. All right, so um, he mentioned multinationals and local companies like yours. Yeah. 
and automatically, I know this is something that happens in every sector. For instance, yeah. in the freight forwarding firm, we have these, you know, multinationals yeah, yeah. taking over that space. Yes. Even though the law stipulates that the job should be reserved for the locals. Mm. Your space, I don't know what it is, but tell us about the competition in your, in your space. Well, like you said, there, mm. is, uh, there are a number of multinational companies and also local um, and players. Mm. For example, my company, Rainbow AgroSciences, it's mm. a joint venture mm. between... Uh, myself and foreign um, entities, but there are 100% uh, foreign-owned companies who are operating in the space. Right. We also have some very good um, local um, companies. Mm. But um, I was checking the data for January to date, mm. and I've seen that the share of local companies are coming down. Mm. And the reason is that you know they need, they have to get extra capital right. now to work which they don't have. Mm. So if last year he was importing 100 containers, for example, this year he, that company needs to cut down mm. and import, let's say, 60 or 50 mm. to be able to have the money required mm. to clear from, from the port. Yes. So their um, share of the market is coming down. Mm. And if this thing continues for... Uh, next year and the years after, mm. definitely about 80% of our market is going to be controlled by the multinational, multinational companies mm. and foreign-owned companies. Mm. And as a country, we don't want to do that. Mm. We need the locals to also control certain um, industries yeah. so that, like he said, the money can stay within the country and you know, pressure on even the hard uh, currency like the dollar mm. will reduce. Mm. But if we have uh, ninety percent of this uh, agricultural input space mm. being controlled by multinationals, mm. at the end of the year, when they declare the dividends, mm. of course they have to repatriate it to yeah, their, yeah. their uh, mother principles, yeah. Yes, mm. their principals. Mm. So it's something that we need to. The government also needs to draw its attention um, to to this situation and try to help the local businesses mm. so that at least for the agri space we should own it mm. rather than allowing mm. foreign entities mm. to control the space. Are you aware of what the, the position of the law is uh, in terms of ownership of uh, businesses in your space? Yes, the GIPC law uh, mandates that once you, you are a foreign entity is able to invest one million dollars mm. you know, you are allowed to trade. Mm. So the law is there. Yeah. So once it doesn't protect the yeah. locals. Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Once they are able to invest that kind of money, you know, they are allowed to operate. To go. And in this day and age, one million dollars, <laughs> <laughs> uh, once the, the opportunity is there, definitely yeah. they will invest mm. and, you know, jump in and, and, and do their business. Mm. Yeah. Right. So these are challenges that your, your company, your, your group has been facing all over the years and all that. And you've done so many things to get these issues ameliorated yeah. and addressed. I just want to find out, is it a case where you are not pressing the right buttons or pulling the right strings, or what do you think is the challenge? Uh, that, that is the question we are also asking ourselves, because mm. we've, we've um, engaged all the relevant stakeholders and authorities mm. as well um, in this matter. Mm. Um, We've been given assurances upon assurances that this will be done, mm. even at a point we're given a one-week ultimatum that the exemptions will be granted. And uh, our companies left a chunk of their uh, import or stocks at the ports mm. with, with the perception that the exemption should be given. Mm only for, for us to come back to the table to be denied the same exemptions. Mm. And what, what is even um, uh, baffling me is the extra cost that comes with it at yeah. the ports, yes, mm. in terms of the mortgages. And they, I mean, the, the monies and then the, the cost involved or the, what they have put into it at the ports is, is very staggering. Mm. It's very staggering. Uh, like Mr. David said, we have another company here which um, last year with the exemptions, mm. um, with six containers paid close to a 95,000 Ghana cities. Mm. With exemptions. This, with the exemptions. Mm -hmm. This year with the exemptions, the same six containers, they are paying close to 350,000 cities plus. 
That's from 95k with exemptions. With exemptions. To 350k. Yes. Wow. Six containers. Mm. And uh, to only tell you, and this one is even less the demurrages that they've even paid at at the ports. Mm. So it will tell you the how cost of pro inputs are going to go high mm. this season, mm. and it's going to trickle down to the farmer and then the consumer mm. as well. So we will continue engaging the stakeholders. Um, uh, as for the Ministry of Agriculture, I mean, they are, they are our friends now because we are almost always the, at their store doorstep, yes. yes. Uh, but, but the tricky aspect of it is that because it is an issue of law, um, the Exemptions Act, as I mentioned, was passed just last year. Right. Um, I think the way forward now is to petition Parliament to see how best they can include agri inputs categorically into the Exemptions Act right. so that we don't have to come back every year to seek for exemptions or to make the issue of exemptions a prerogative of mm. a sector minister, right. uh, which is not going to speak well for uh, the food security condition of Ghana. Mm. All right, so you mentioned extra costs at the port. Mm. Can you tell us, you mentioned demorage yes. and all that. Tell us on the extra costs you incur at the port. So mm. the um, extra costs mm. that we incur, apart from this, um, the fact that we are, uh, the exemptions are um, over and we are paying full duty. Mm. We also have the challenge that the uh, GRA uh, reference price list that they use mm. to come up with the valuation for these uh, products are also very high. Mm. You know, our products are such that the prices are not stable. Mm. They go up and they come down. Mm. Last year, for instance, we were buying our products at um, all-time high prices. Fortunately, this year, the prices have slumped, mm. and we expected that we will enjoy... The price list, the, list will be yes. reviewed downward. But <laughs> mm. the reference price list that GRA is using is higher than the actual prices we are buying these items. So, mm. for example, you buy um, a weedy side at current rate around $1.8, mm. but their reference price is like 2.7. Okay. So and then they will charge the duty on the two point seven, not your actual um, one point eight. Yes, yeah. mm. and it's making. Have you caused to to run them through the? Because uh, you have evidence that yes, this is one point eight. Personally, I have been to um, customs mm. with evidence, the custom declaration from the port of loading. Mm. I have showed it to them that look, this is how much we are we are getting yes. it. But they will say that this is what have been given to us <laughs> to use. Okay. So they will not shy away from using what has yeah. been given. They said that is the benchmark mm. and that is what they are using. Mm. But we've provided evidence because mm. they give room for um, um, you to appeal. Yes. So we use the appeal process. process. We push these things in, but still. You send the evidence and... <laughs> no, it wow. will still come out. But I know that they, they are under pressure to raise revenue and mm. all that, but you know, we also have to be considerate. Mm. When prices went up, we paid at those high prices. Now mm. it has come down. Mm. At least we should also uh, benefit from that. Mm. So you're talking about balancing trade facilitation and revenue mm. mobilization. Exactly. Mm. The other thing um, I, uh, which has also come up recently is the increase in, uh, in tariffs mm. at the port now. Mm. You know, MPS has increased there are tariffs, same mm. too for uh, Gapoa. Mm. And you also, the shipping line charges, always dollar denominated. <laughs> so when exchange rate goes up, you know where it also goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are the extra costs that also... Yes, I think in. like you mentioned, what you are grappling with, the exchange rate fluctuations, yes. the uh, others, is the same thing that you are also grappling with. And so <laughs> 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 it's the same thing. Yeah. So the story is, is no different yes. for, yeah. for anyone else. And well, so I think that that accounts for, for that because I am privy to uh, a press release that was issued by GPHA yeah. with respect to the uh, increase, the in, increase tariff. in tariffs. And, yeah. and that was yeah. what, those are the reasons they gave, yeah, yeah. you know. And so it makes sense, don't you think? Well, since GPHA is a Ghanaian <laughs> entity, so they have to use the local currency in their operations. Yeah. <laughs> well. mm, yeah. All right. So um, uh, let me come to uh, Rashad. Yeah. When the exemptions were going to be taken off, mm -hmm. did you make a case as to why they shouldn't touch uh, those in your space? 
Um, what were the reasons they had used for, for removing the exemptions, if so, you know? So, um, as I mentioned, the Exemptions Act was passed last year in mm. September. Mm. Uh, that's the Act 1083. Mm. And uh, what happened was that prior to the Exemptions Act being passed, um, initially companies would have to put into writing mm. to the Ministry of Agri, and then the Agri Ministry of Agri will also seek for the exemptions from the Ministry of Finance. Mm. Now, um, when, when we engaged, they said it passed through cabinet mm. and then uh, uh, they engage a lot of stakeholders. But to tell you what, those stakeholders in our space, the other pharma groups and then the other um, yeah, input dealers, mm. none of them have mentioned or have attested to being engaged in, in, in any way or the other mm. before the exemptions oh, act was passed. Yes. Mm. So it, it was purely a parliament process mm. and we were not really involved in in the in the process mm. but as i did mention the same exemptions act gives the ministry of finance to work directly with sector ministers yeah. such as the ministry of agri to grant industry specific exemptions to them mm. and this is now what we are trying to uh, take advantage of oh. because it hasn't been captured specifically in the exemptions act mm. Moving forward, we want to ing we've even petitioned Parliament. Mm. Uh, we want to we are seeking for a review of the Exemptions Act so that um, agri inputs will be categorically stated in the Exemptions Act. Yeah, you, you mentioned so yeah. that we don't have to come back um, to to apply for these exemptions. Mm. What's your current capacity, Mr. Ansong? Um, I just want to find out how you are performing uh, with the exemptions. Mm -hmm. and what your performance level is, if you can give us some figures. Okay. Mm. So, um, last year, we were doing well over 400 um, containers mm. through the ports. This Yearly? That was for last year? That's yeah. for last year. Okay, yes. This year, um, the volumes have gone up. Mm. Not... Uh, because it means you are doing more than you are anticipating to do more than 400 this year. Certainly, because the um, cost mm. has dropped, the cost of the input mm. itself has dropped significantly on the global market. On yes. the global market, mm. because last year for a particular active, mm. we were buying at um, over six dollars. Mm. Now it has reduced to less than two dollars. You right. can imagine. Mm. So it gives you. A bit of room yeah. to do more. Yeah. So that is the main reason why we are the volumes in, are have gone up. Uh, yeah. Assuming the price is at the six that we were buying last year, mm. there is absolutely no way we can bring that the kind of volume at with the uh, current right. exemption. Yeah. No, <laughs> the, the cost will be it will be too much for you to pay yeah. mm. at the port. Mm. So mm. the volumes will come down. So it means that. If prices, like I said, our prices goes up and comes down. Mm. If it gets up there, definitely we will have to reduce. Mm. If the ex uh, um, exemptions have not been restored, yes. we would have to reduce our, our volumes because mm. we will not be able to pay. Mm. Um, sometimes one BL, we pay over a million CDs, CDs. just on one, uh, bill of one, one bill of lading. Mm. With, uh, like and that calculates containers. how many containers? That's like with 10 containers mm. there mm. we are paying this kind of like amount so you mm -hmm. can imagine mm -hmm. if you are bringing 400 500 600 containers, containers yeah. that would be uh, too expensive for us to handle mm. yes mm. so this year we have benefited from the downward trend mm. and, uh, yes. in prices of global price exactly. reduction in exactly in price of inputs yes mm. okay and so that means that you would have been able to do more uh, if mm. the exemptions, you know, the exemptions were, were still in yes. place. And yeah. farmers would have benefited a lot mm. because as the price had gone down to all-time low yeah. mm. and farmers would have really gotten cheaper um, agrochemicals, mm. especially mm. this year. But because of these issues, they are not benefiting at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Why don't you present a paper to the ministries of... Uh, uh, ministries of Finance and Agri, and then intimate to them that this is the situation on the global market. The price of inputs have been slashed down drastically, and you think that if they are able to uh, perhaps mm -hmm. do something, you mm -hmm. can bring in, you know, yeah. multiples of sure. these inputs for Ghanaians. Maybe add some rebates. 
yeah. from discounts. So, so that is actually our supplies next step. To, yes. to, to, to mm. That is actually our next is that step. A, a, yeah. a, a, something that's feasible? Very feasible mm. because um, we, now we are trying to have an engagement with the Ministry of Finance and mm. that uh, we can put up these figures like Mr. David is saying mm. and then we can make a case for, for them to see uh, the merit of, of what we are asking for. Mm. So um, hopefully uh, in the next few weeks, we should be able to have that engagement with the Ministry of Finance to mm. see how feasible that will be. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's it. Uh, pretty shortly, we shall be going for some messages. Um, but let me uh, come to you, Rashad. Of your 23 members, your 23 yeah. member companies. Companies, yeah. Yes. Um, what would you say their performance is at the moment? Does it cut across that, yes, the effect of the removal of the exemptions has negatively impacted them, and so they are not uh, perhaps uh, yes. performing as they should? So, so generally, um, um, as I said, a lot mm. of uh, about 80% or 90% of the members are multinationals. Mm. So these companies have that financial muscle. Yes. So, they, I mean, um, at worst-case scenario, they only pass on the cost to the farmer. And uh, the few that are local, um, they have felt the shocks. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not really affected the multinationals that mm. much, but they're only, it's only going to be passed on to the farmer. Right. And, and when it's passed on to the farmer, um, the cost of pro, uh, acreages uh, yeah, sure. are going mm -hmm. to go down, yeah. and then um, food prices are going up, as, as we are witnessing right mm. now. Mm. So, uh, and it's, it's a disincentive mm. for local investors or our local brothers and mm. uh, sisters to also come up to venture into agri-input businesses, right. as, as, as we are saying. Absolutely. If, if, if the ground or it, there's a level playing field and then the, there's a conducive business environment, mm. it will call for more investors to come into that oh. space and then invest more into agri-inputs. Right. Okay, so there's a question here. It says, what are the contribu contributing factors uh, to the cost of the inputs declined on the international market. Can Mr. Ansong uh, share that with us? My name is Ben uh, in Tema. Yes, um, a, a lot. We uh, bring in uh, agrochemicals, mm. and a lot of these agrochemicals are also der derivatives of crude oil. Right. So sometimes when you have the crude oil prices coming down, yeah. It also impacts on uh, agrochemicals. Yes. And also, sometimes the actives, mm. when um, prices of the active ingredients mm. also uh, come down, we also get um, situations like this. Mm. But um, last year, for instance, there, I would say there was almost a cartel of some companies outside who tried their best to push up the prices, mm. you know. Mm. So mm. last year, those companies made a lot of uh, money out there. They pushed up their prices so high, and it got to a point that it, it was too much, and then demand uh, yeah. started falling. Mm. And because of that, it also affected, once there was no demand, they had to bring down um, prices. Mm. So that also caused um, prices to, to, to come down, mm. yeah. All right, so when you bring your inputs, how, how do you distribute it? Do, they, uh, do you place it at a shop or uh, a warehouse and get the you know, farmers or those who require them, mm. or you also retail? So to companies like, yeah. like us, we don't do uh, retailing mm. of um, the inputs. Mm. So we have distributors right. that we sell to. Mm. And the distributors also sell on to retailers. Right. So the chain is there. Mm, mm, um, mm. We give to distributors, and the distributors also sell to retailers. Retailers now to the farmers. Mm. Yes. So it's a chain. Yeah. yeah yes, mm, it's a chain. Mm, 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 so we bring in and warehouse them, and we distribute to our um, distributors across the country. Mm, yeah. mm. Wow. All right, so that means that the distributors are solely dependent on you, and <laughs> as and when you run out of supplies, it means they are also out of business. Yeah, yeah. certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. All right, yeah. so this is Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television, and tonight we are taking a look at the agro input supply uh, space and uh, what the challenges they face when they import into the country. And in my intro, I told you that they have faced a lot of challenges, and they've tried rectifying some of these challenges. Uh, some to no avail, uh, but they are still pressing on, and we want to find out what the way forward uh, for this particular 
supply industry is. This is Ion Port, and uh, it's on Metro TV. Uh, we're going for a quick break. When we return, we'll continue the show. Please do stay with us. <laughs> Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, are they come? Shut <laughs> Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP high performance products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony, you got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey, go for that boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Goyle, Goyle. Electricity, electricity, pay our taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302. 246319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, welcome back. This is Ion Port on Metropolitan Television. Tonight we are taking a look at the agro input supply space and uh, some of the challenges they face when they are importing and what the way forward would be. Um, 
my guest in the studios, Mr. Rashad Kadri, who is the Programs Manager for Crop Life Ghana, and indeed Mr. David Owari Anson, who is Managing Director, Rainbow AgroSciences Limited. Uh, they're the two gentlemen we're having a discussion with uh, uh, tonight. This message says, good afternoon. Your panelists are trying their best to do business in Ghana. All those costs at the port is automatically transferred uh, to the final consumer. Now, we should expect the prices of foodstuffs to increase next year since the prices of farm inputs are very, very high this year. No and no government subsidies this year. Let us all prepare for that. Richard uh, in Fumbisi, he sent in this one. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. This one says, please tell Mr. Ansong that I am taking a lot of notes from his submissions. Also ask him uh, what steps the agrochemical importers are taking to stop government use of benchmark prices for duty computation. This one is from Abraham in Spintex. Uh, do you have a response for Abraham? Yeah, I, I think I mentioned, mentioned yeah. that mm. um, we are, you know, we are using the ap appeals process mm. to try and get um, the GRA to mm. accept the values that we, 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 we mm. bring in. But yes. I know it's been a challenge. Mm. Yeah. You will submit, but <laughs> you, it's difficult for you to get. Even if Absolutely. they grant it to you, they will just remove some small yeah. cents. Right. Just to say, okay, we've done something. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Something to represent something. <laughs> something to represent <laughs> something. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, be... Yes, I've been told by the production team that we can activate the phone lines uh, for you to call in now. The number to dial is uh, 020-552-8353. 20 uh, You can call in. That's a number right there on your screen. Uh, you can call in and contribute to the discussion. Now, this one says, uh, government policy of removal of exemptions not well targeted. Uh, how do you remove exemptions on agricultural inputs under the guise of revenue maximization? Uh, some individuals or institutions who do not deserve the exemptions are rather considered, for instance, under the government flagship programs. I think Ghana has challenges uh, when it comes to policy implementations, which in the long run affects the poor. This one is from Eric. Thank you very much, Eric. You didn't tell us where you sent in the message from, but uh, your point is well noted. Thank you very much indeed. This one says, good evening, sir. Please, can the agro input supplies team up, supplies, uh, team up with Apostle Kojosa for, for him to produce more <laughs> of his chemicals for Ghanaians? Thank you. Is that something you're considering? <laughs> you know, um, the industry, right, is... Um, very broad and the, mm. the challenges that farmers face mm. are also very wide. We have yeah. issues about uh, fungi infestation, insects, and then um, the weeds. Mm. And even when it comes to weeds, they are selective, you know, we plant, we plant uh, different crops right. and you need to bring a chemical that will select that crop and kill the weeds. So mm. it's not just a simple matter like that. Mm. So it's a lot of... Um, Research goes into this for chemicals, new molecules to be developed. Mm. So, yes, we can do a bit of um, what he does, the inorgan yeah. uh, organic stuff. Yes. But, you know, if you want to feed millions of people, sometimes the organic um, pesticides, you Wouldn't know, work. Not, yeah. Mm. All right. This one says uh, the farmers are suffering all because of uh, herbicides prices. Uh, so, with this, we have. Uh, to reduce our farm size. But with the help of uh, Rainbow Agro Sciences, we the farmers can farm now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's no name attached yeah. to this one. So that's one particular farmer reposing uh, some confidence yeah. in, in your company. Uh, this one says, please, would, we want to know if agri-input importers who operate in other African countries as well as Ghana, how they are faring. Okay, they want to know how agro-input, uh, you know, uh, uh, supplies in other African countries are faring. Do you have any idea how your counterparts in other countries uh, are faring? Um, uh, for, for them, uh, they, they really don't have this, this, this problem that we are facing right mm. now, especially with the prices issues. Mm. And um, this, this is also going to, like I mentioned, the issue of counterfeiting. Yes. Um, if, if this is not addressed, mm. um, we are going to, uh, a lot of farmers will go out there to the neighboring countries, yes. Togo, Burkina, uh, yeah. Côte d'Ivoire, mm. and bring in products that are counterfeit, counterfeit, yes. and, and uns unsuspecting to a lot of farmers. Yes. So um, we we we're trying to curb these issues. Tell us, just tell us about the, the uh, counterfeit. Yes. So the counterfeit yeah. uh, has been um, one of the major challenges. Counterfeit to, products. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, as an industry, mm. uh, so we have what we call counterfeits and uh, illegal. 
pesticides or fertilizers. Mm. Now, a counterfeit is when you bring in a product or you manufacture a product and make it look like the original. Mm. But the illegal ones, they could be genuine, but they are not registered for use for in-country. Mm. For instance, the EPA law states that for any uh, product to be used in Ghana, crop protection product to be used in Ghana, uh, one, you should look at the, the labeling. It should be in your official language. Right. For instance, here our official language is English. Yes. So if you see any product out there that has a label in a different language, Chinese, French, it could be genuine, but mm. it's not accepted for use right. in, 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 in the country. Because as crop life, we also pride ourselves in stewardship. Stewardship as in the safe and responsible use of these pesticides and fertilizers. Right where we can maximize its benefits and minimize uh, the risk. Mm. And um, in, in applying these pesticides and fertilizers, you need to be able to, you have to be trained by the authorities, EPA, right. PPRSD, and then CropLife, we also do trainings as well, mm. so that you can be able to read the label and understand what the application um, direct, directives are mm. before you can be able to apply these um, um, products. Right. And if it is in a language that is other than English, mm. I'm, I'm not sure how they are going to be able to read the directives and right. application. They are going to get everything wrong. So um, counterfeiting, the issue of counterfeiting has been a big challenge. And we've been working closely with um, Environmental Protection Agency, Agency in that regard. Mm. Um, we, we have The missing link has been the prosecution. Mm. Usually when people are being arrested for possessing um, counterfeit or illegal crop protection products. Mm. Um, the, there hasn't been a lot of prosecutions in that regard. At recently, um, earlier in June, May, June, uh, mm. we collaborated with the Environmental Protection Agency to train some um, lawyers from the Attorney General's Department, the Department of Public Prosecution, mm. on pesticide laws and regulations in Ghana so that they can position themselves very well to be able to administer deterrent uh, penal measures yes. to culprits who are caught up um, selling these counterfeit and illegal pesticides in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So with the EPA as, and the PPRSD, that's the Plant Protection and Regulatory Service yeah. Department of Ministry of Food and Agriculture, we are collaborating with okay. them. And So let's go to, to hold, hold it there. Don't forget where you are sure. living. <laughs> so that we'll, we'll pick Eric and come back. Good evening, sir. Hello, Eric. Good evening. Hello, Eric. Well, I think, I think we don't have Eric. Uh, maybe we're having challenges yes. with this line. Yes. So as, as I was saying, we are collaborating effectively with these institutions, mm. EP and then PPRSD, uh, to combat the uh, issue of counterfeit and legal pesticides, which is also a challenge mm. in, in, in our system. And as I did mention earlier, if, if these issues, if cost of inputs goes up, mm. um, cost of pesticides, fertilizers go up, um, the easiest way farmers would, 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 would take is to go to the neighboring countries mm. to buy these same products yeah. or even um, unsuspecting products yeah. at a relatively che cheaper, cheaper prices. Rate, yes. yeah. And it's not going to even have not just the cost, but the safe and response, uh, the, the risk to the environment, mm. the human health, and to the crops is, is what we are looking at. Mm. All right, I understand we have uh, Derek once again on the line. Good evening. Good evening, too. Hello? Good evening. Yes, uh, can you speak up a bit, please? Yeah, good evening. I want to continue. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, sir. Um, let me thank the MD for Rainbow Agro Sciences for his uh, submission. Mm. Hello, Derek? Yes, I want to thank the MD for Rainbow Agro Science for his submission. Yes. Yes, I think um, their company is doing very well with regards to, they have a program called Rainbow Crop Clinic. And this program is helping educate farmers on the safe use of this pesticide. Okay. Yeah, so uh, good old to him for that. And my question is, how, when government uh, or the internal revenue, the GRE, review those tariffs, how positive is it going to affect their cost and also influence the prices of the product on the market? Right. Did you get him? 
Yeah. Yes, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. Uh, they would respond to your question. Right. So I think he wants to know the impact of... If, 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 if GRA yes. eventually decides to, decides you know, to, yes, <laughs> to yield <laughs> to your request. Mm. Yes, or bring it on board the exemption. Yeah, yeah, that is quite straightforward. Mm. It's, you know, the items that I listed, the import duty, special import levy, mm -hmm. processing fee, IRS deposit, mm. that sums up to yeah. 10%. Yes. So it means automatically... 10% of your CIF mm. is, 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 gone. is yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, you save it. So mm. let's maybe to be uh, be real for them, if the, the value of your goods is like $100,000, yes. that 10% is 10,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. So 10,000 times current exchange rate, rate yeah. $10,000 I mean, yeah. Times current exchange yeah. rate is over a hundred and something thousand. Yeah. Mm. So that is a big <laughs> amount of money Savings, yeah. that you you save, yeah, and that right. reduces the cost, yeah. which we will pass on to the um, um, end the user, farmer. Right. The farmer. Yes. Okay. All right. So you can also call in. Remember the number is right there on your screen: zero two zero five five two eight three five three. Uh, you can call in and contribute to the discussion. Now, you, you had um, Rashad on, on the issue of counterfeits and how uh, people are likely, uh, if things uh, get worse, to patronize neighboring countries and mm -hmm. purchase their products and come in at relatively cheaper prices. Yeah. I want to find out from you, you are one of the people that bring in some of these uh, products, yes. uh, these inputs. Mm -hmm. How do, does the operations, how do the operations of these counterfeit people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, affect your operations? You know, uh, because of the high prices now, a lot of farmers, because they are poor, mm. will always want to buy what is cheap. Yeah. And the counterfeiting is so real mm. that um, I think two years ago, our company had issue mm. like this. There was somebody in Swedro who was mixing <laughs> our <laughs> product with certain chemicals mm. and bottling it in Swedro and selling it at a cheap price. Mm. And then the farmers will use and the thing will not work. And then, because he's using our label, yes. you now call. They came attacking you. And sure. say, hey, your products, I've uh, used your yeah. product, it's not, not working. working. Then we say, ah, how can this be true? Then we, we would take our um, original product, product, go there, there, spray, and, and the thing works. It works yeah. So then you ask yourself, where did, what this did you get? buy? Yeah. And the thing went on for a while until, by God's grace, a farmer called. He said, look, I know rainbow product. Yes. What I have bought, it looks like. But I know this is not. Yes. And then he sent me a video mm. of how the packaging has been done and all that. And I saw that, no. It was different. So it we different. investigated and then we traced back and then we identified the person mm. who was doing that. Did you arrest the person? Certainly we did. Has the person been prosecuted? The, the, <laughs> the prosecution mm. of this, uh, this is like he mentioned mm. about the prosecution yeah. issue. Mm. It's also um, another issue. Another issue. Altogether. But I think crop life is, is seriously working on it. Mm. That's why he said we are training uh, the attorney general, the, yes, the yeah. attorney general department to yeah. be able to prosecute so such these cases. Issues. Okay. Yes. Wow. I see. Okay. So let's take a look at the effects of all this on food security in our country. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Um, uh, at the beginning, in the beginning, um, Mr. David mentioned about the price inflation, consumer yes. price inflation, which is mm. hovering over 50%. Yes. Um, I also did mention that the World Bank um, just last week yes. mentioned that Ghana was among the to uh, top 10 countries with mm. a higher um, consumer price mm. inflation. Mm. So these are all effects of the high cost of inputs. Right. Yes. So what is, what is going to happen is that if these exemptions are not granted and input prices keep soaring, farmers are going to reduce their acreages. Mm. Because uh, how many of them can be able to uh, take the care of all these yeah, 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 costs? Yeah, yeah, and when size, they reduce their sizes, acreages, yeah. productivity definitely is going to go down. Mm. Farmers' incomes will also go down. Absolutely. Then our food prices in the markets are also going to go up, up yeah. which is going to come back to you and I. Mm. So it has a trickling down effect to every single Ghanaian. Yeah. And I think um, we, we all need to stand up to this and then... Um, uh, address government so that these exemptions can be granted and then for input prices to come down mm. and for us to to attain the food security and yeah. self-sufficiency that we are all we've all been talking about mm. Mm. all right so let me come to um mr ansong yeah. um 
I know you've done business in the port for quite some time now. You said you have been in assistance for 10 years. Yes. Yeah, uh, decade, myself, yeah. I've been in the industry for like 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> All right. Okay. But you're yeah. talking about Agro Sciences Yeah, Limited. for Rainbow 10 Rainbow years, Agro yes. Sciences yeah. Limited. Okay, yeah. sure. All right. And you've done business in the port. You've been there. You've done yeah. a lot of stuff. Tell, him, tell me your impression about operations in the port and your encounter with... Yes. Um, I will say that the uh, Thermal port is one of the... I will say it's a, a, an efficient port. Okay. Hold it. Well, okay. okay. you, yeah, you, you, you continue. But I understand we have a caller. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Um, I'm Richard from Fumbisi. Can you speak up a bit for us, please? Yeah, I'm calling from Fumbisi. Richard. Fumbisi? Yes, please. Are you sent a message? <laughs> yes. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting topic. Thank you. Evening. Thanks to your panelists. Thank you. My other concern has to do with the the the, the invoices they present to GRA and they reject. Mm. And when you look at it, actually most of the farm inputs have come down as compared to the beginning of the year. Mm. So if GRA is now rejecting what the, the suppliers are presenting to them and having their that old price, because that time actually the price were not easy. Mm. Despite government subsidy, the price were as higher than more than what we have to now, currently as I'm speaking to you. Because we're buying condemned around 60 cities, now condemned is around 54 cities. Mm. So that tells you that really there's a, a decrease in the price of most of the farming goods. That's why there's no government subsidy. So if DRA is doing that, then at the end of the day, the suppliers will push the prices they cost into with the farmers. And then they will also push it into the final consumer. A mix today, mix today in Fumbisi. I was just told today that it is, it is, it is around 1,200 cities. One bag of meat, that is the, 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 the five kilograms. And that is not good. What means next year, and we're kind of a, a food price. Increase is as, as, as a result of our inflation in the country. Mm. Next year, we should, be, we should be ready to pay more because there's no government subsidy at all. People have reduced their farm size. It's fine to be able to buy the fertilizer and farm. But next year, we we'll push everything into the consumer. And that will tell you that we should brace very, we should just be prepared to face it next year. That as a food uh, inflation there is going to increase per boss. Right. <laughs> that one, Okay. Richard, thank you very much indeed for your call. He called all the way from the Upper East. Uh, Richard, we are grateful to you uh, for that call. Yes, you were... Yes, uh, I was saying that mm. the Thermal Port, uh, I would have to give uh, thumbs up to GPHA. I right. think the port is uh, very efficient. Mm. Um, with my experience, once all things being equal, you, you should be able to get your... Uh, containers out in two or three days. Right. Yes, and I think it's um, very good compared to other ports in the yeah. sub region. Okay. I think uh, Thermal Port um, is quite efficient. Wow. It's just um, maybe for some of the terminals right. that we have a bit of challenge with. I don't yes. want you to mention no, that. No, I would not. I would not. I would not. Yes. But mm. just for. Um, GPHA to also look at the other, other terminals, terminals operating. You know, yeah, operating. GPHA is a landlord, so they, they <laughs> have responsibility. So yeah. that they don't delay. Right. They are kind of causing the delay. Right. If you have it in MPS, two or three days, you're, you're off. You are you're off. Gone. Yeah. Yes. So I think they are, they are doing where the paperless system is working mm. and they just need to uh, improve on uh, some few issues. Yeah. All right. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Rashad, yeah. yeah, so some recommendations uh, you'd want to make. I know you've done this over and over again, yeah. uh, but if, if you have any recommendations to make uh, uh, to the powers that be, uh, so the need for them to, uh, you know, incline their ear to your, uh, sure. you know, request and see what they can do to, to ameliorate the challenges that uh, confront you. Sure. Mm. Um, we are all aware the the rural agriculture plays in our economy. Okay. Let's take our last caller and then sure. we'll we come to you. Dominic uh, Naba from Tamale. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening, sir. Great. Good to have yes, you. Sir, thank you so much. Uh, 
Um, I want to contribute to the program. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, it is a wonderful program okay, well sir. educated to uh, Ghanaians. Thank you very much. Yes, to talk about the insulation. Mm. It's a serious canker to the nation. Mm. It is one of the causes of uh, higher prices in Ghana. Mm. And when you look around it, 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 it seems we don't have leaders in this country. It is a serious problem, mm. not only to the farmers, but to the whole nation. Mm. Look, I sympathize so much to uh, the uh, farming community uh, in Ghana here. Mm. I am someone who deals in the spare parts. Mm. And for uh, about two months ago, I've cleared a container at the Tema port. Mm. And it was very, very difficult for me mm. because uh, that was a 20, uh, I mean, 40 seater container. Right. The import duty alone was about 128,000 Ghana cities. 178. 28, 128,000 Ghana cities. Okay. Yes. Aside other uh, uh, payment I have to make, mm. shipping lines, what and what, what and what, and I have at the end of the day have to add it back to my prices to be able to come out with my selling prices. Okay. Mm. And what is, what is it that the, what is it that you brought in? Yeah, it was a uh, uh, ties. Ties. Uh, that's okay. The farm implements. I mean the tractor ties. Okay. Uh, there were uh, oils. I mean the uh, engine oils, okay. brake fluid, and a lot. Right. Okay. So they were assorted goods that were packed in the twenty feet container. Right. So if you look around it. At the end of the day, I have to also sell and make profit because I'm a businessman. Mm. There is no business uh, person that wants to uh, sell at a loss or, yeah. or, or run the business at a loss. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, the final consumer has to bear the consequences. Yeah. So most of the times, if you look at all this surrounding the nation, Mm. And someone can pack toilets in his room, uh, her room. Yes. And there are so many leakages going around in this country, and mm. we cannot patch it up. I mean, it's a, it's a serious thing. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, it's Dominic. A serious thing. Point well made. Point well made. Thank you very much indeed. We are grateful to you. Uh, you happen to be our last caller. Thank you very <laughs> much, uh, Rashad. So just yes. uh, wrap us up. Uh, uh, tell us some recommendations you'd like to make yes. to government to as to the need for them to incline uh, their ear to you and uh, perhaps yield to your request of restoring the exemptions that you were enjoying sure. that made your operations quite sure. um, as, I was, as I was saying, um, mm -hmm. I mean, to, to restructure the tax, uh, Ghana's tax exemption regime yes. is, is absolutely a good idea. Mm. Uh, because there are a lot of loopholes. I thought you were going to say it's non-negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea to, yes. I mean, restructure our exemptions regime, and mm. we, mm. we loud government for that. Mm. Uh, because if you look at the whole exemptions regime, the, the loopholes were too too many. Yeah. And um, government needed to also rake in some revenue by Absolutely. blocking, and uh, some some um, loopholes yes. to to straighten up the the regime. Right. But um, we know the role agriculture plays. In mm. our economy, mm. agriculture is so sensitive. Just like health, yes. education, uh, these sectors shouldn't be compromised so. when it comes to taxes. Yeah. And uh, so we continue to plead to government to take a second look at the Tax Exemptions Act right. and include agriculture inputs specifically and categorically yes. as part of the exemptions, yes. so that we don't have to come back here uh, the next year and the years to discuss the same issues. To discuss the same old issues, All knowing right. what uh, the contribution agriculture has played in mm. the economy of Ghana. Right, great. Ms. Hansong, yes. 30 seconds, uh, if you can, maybe uh, your last words, if, if you have any. Well, what I would say is um, just to add on to uh, what? what Rashad yes. has said, mm. that um, food security is yeah. a national security issue. issue yeah. And the government should at least help our poor farmers, you know, to be able to make some livelihood. Absolutely. You know, to improve their standard of living, living. and all that. So 
we it's just an appeal uh, to government right. to try and help our farmers so that we will be able to have the food security that all of us are yearning for. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. David Owari. Ansong is Managing Director, Rainbow Agro-Sciences Limited, and indeed Mr. Kadri Rashad, Programs Manager, Crop Life Ghana. Uh, we've been discussing the challenges that uh, importers of agro inputs uh, face in, in our country and what the way forward is. They've given you all the statistics, all that you need to know. They painted a picture, vivid picture of what the situation looks like and why government must heed to their uh, demand of restoring the exemptions that they were enjoying so that we can have uh, some food security in the country and have our, our farmers, you know, increase their, their farm sizes and all that. And so that's how we draw the curtain on uh, tonight's edition of Eye on Port here on Metropolitan Television. We say a big thanks to our sponsors, Ghana Revenue Authority, Guelph PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, Meridian Port Services, MPS, and Phoenix Insurance. Remember, the show is powered by the Ghana Port and Abbas Authority. And their bridge version will be aired on uh, Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. on Ghana Television. My name is Kennedy Mona. We entreat you to keep watching the rest of our programs here on Metro TV. And God willing, next week we shall bounce back, same time, with Eye on Port. Have a super week ahead and enjoy the rest of the evening.